What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, Seekers. You guys already know what we do here, man. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, man, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, anything weird, usually and explain it. You can find right here on this channel, man. Thank you, um, Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, and subbing up to the channel. I appreciate that, man. You guys were seeking the truth just like you. Found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out. was breaking down for us man like i said when you seen those orbs it was definitely orbs like surrounding the plane and they were leaving those freaking lines i don't know if they had something to do with that disappearance man but the way they just like i said they converged on the plane and it made it look like it was a freaking damn black hole and the plane just disappeared <laughs> i'm definitely going to do some more research and then that check that out insane man the things technology can do nowadays If this video isn't proof that we're under attack, that nature is under attack, the sunlight is being blocked from us. Without sunlight, photosynthesis can't occur, which means that all living things will die eventually. And we at the same time have the world leaders, the United Nations and the World Economic Forum telling us by the year 2030, they will fulfill the Great Reset and completely transition us from this current system into a new system of artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. where they openly brag about not needing a nature anymore because now they are the new creators of life, inorganic life. We have to do something now or else we're gonna find ourselves in a position without being able to depend on nature and being forced to depend on them. What is that? Something's definitely up with the skies, bro. 
looks like artificial clouds or something. Seems like it. I think what we've seen was like some artificial clouds or some cover or something, man. Cause that was just like a weird pattern. It's like really straight, and there was a couple of like big holes on the on the sky. I'm telling you, man, this things, bro. Like you said, he heard, man, about 20, 30, they trying to replace the freaking nature with artificial nature, bro. I do not like that. I don't like what I'm hearing, bro. <laughs> we gotta fight back, y'all. If Satan ruled the world and he had a unified language, what language would everyone speak? Hmm. That's right, English. Did you know that English is a Germanically derived, occult influenced language? Why do you think our language is called spelling? Other languages do not derive their vocabulary words from witchcraft terms. The words in the English language were crafted by known occultists, like Sir Francis Bacon, whom you may not have heard of, but you probably heard of a secret writing group called the Spear Shakers, or should I say Shakespeare? Yeah, William Shakespeare was not a real person. And we know that because the writing styles in his different stories are drastically different. William Shakespeare is responsible for introducing 1,700 words into our vocabulary. William Shakespeare was not a real person. He was a group of individuals ran by Sir Francis Bacon, a known occultist, who had an agenda. He had an agenda to normalize witchcraft into our everyday speech. Hmm. Speaking of normalizing things, what do you think Hollywood is? Hollywood is the wood that witches and wizards use to craft their wands and stabs out of. It's a derivative of Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. It's an extension of witchcraft. And to this day, it continues to craft our language even further. The Hollywood viewing point is marked with a blood drop. And people still think it's a kid. What the hell? I mean, I've never been to LA before, so I know about the Hollywood sign, but I definitely didn't know about the freaking blood drop sign. That's like symbolism, man. Like, they're trying to, like, relay a message out without really saying anything. And you saw how he said spelling. The word spelling just spells in a curse with his curse. So, that's like some type of, I don't know, that's some type of witchcraft or something going on there, man. Like I said, Seekers, bro, when I watch these videos with you guys, man, I'm learning new things just like you. We fellow Seekers, man, just seeking out the truth. I have a theory that the Mandela effect is used to see how much of history can be altered in front of our eyes. Here's a prime example of one of that. There is this woman on TikTok who is going crazy because she swore the Fruit of the Loom had a cornucopia logo. And to the point that even Fruit of the Loom themselves put a timeline of all their logos and it never had a cornucopia. And this woman mm -hmm. went hard. Her therapist told her, yo, you need to chill out. You need to just drop this. So she went through all of her old clothing and Lo and behold, she found a shirt with the Fruit of the Loom with the Cornucopia logo on. That shows me, like, yo, I'm, I think the Mandela effect is an operation that's running around right now to see mm -hmm. how much of history can be altered right in front of our eyes without us noticing it. And they gaslight the public and be like, nope, this never happened. Damn, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, bro, people are thinking about it very little. Like, oh, it's the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein Bears or Jiffy or Jif's Peanut Butter. Mm -hmm. No, it's much larger than that guys they're using this to see oh if we can get people to forget certain primary things about their childhood what can we do with history he was freaking spit some hardcore facts man like i said i never even really thought about the mandela effect like that like if they could just change little stuff man then yeah, what's to say they haven't changed like major events in the history bro they could be changing it right now we don't even know Oh, the people just says the Mandela effect, man. They're just gonna dismiss you as crazy. These videos, man. We're going See, this is why I think they're gonna shut down the grid, dude. Because what's gonna happen is the Unity voice is gonna get so loud, and then they're just gonna shut the whole thing down. Because it's like flipping the game table over, right? Like you know you're gonna lose, you're about to lose, you're like, Get. and you flip the game over, and that's what they're gonna do, bro. They have mm -hmm. the ability to do it. You better start thinking about what's going to happen if that happens. The grid? I don't think that that's a bad idea. What you're going to start seeing now as the media and governments try to cover up the spiritual world entering into ours is this little caption way at the bottom of the video that says AI generated. 
there are several very real videos of actual giants being interviewed by people on TikTok right now. And at the bottom, you'll see AI generated. Meanwhile, a ton of fake UFO videos that were absolutely AI generated are not getting the same caption. You might have also noticed that there are several videos showing holographic projections of portals opening up in the sky and various deities and gods and spiritual beings coming through them. Mm -hmm. They're doing this because it's actually starting to happen in real life. Not holographic projections, not AI generations. They are going to flood the internet with fake videos that they're not going to tell you are AI and then all the real ones they're going to tell you are AI and fake. The first and second heaven are merging into one. Mm -hmm. There will be many great signs and spiritual sights that will be absolutely real. And they're going to do everything they can to get ahead of it, shut down the real videos, and give their version of the story and the narrative based on their aliens and their space and their dishonest science. There's a reason they're showing these portals open up and showing you different beings, because those beings are real. Meditate, for instance, you've seen the different Hindu deities, mm -hmm. and they open up just the same way that they're holographically projecting it in the sky right now. I have to say that the schemes are absolutely brilliant, but I can see right through them because I understand the true hitter, as many of you do too. Don't let your eyes be deceived, don't let your ears be lied to. Hold fast to what is always true the truth itself. Mm. Now, Passion, courage, discernment. These are the things that are going to matter the most. These are the things that always matter. These are the things that are needed in a world that is falling apart. Do not be deceived. Hold fast. Meditate. Breathe. Pray. Seek God and righteousness and the light of Christ. Amen. What are you saying, bro? I don't like I said, it's kind of makes sense, man. Like I said, what happens is if you just drop a video or something, man, like I said, the people were interviewing the Giants, and they just said it's AI generated, but there is some, like, fake videos, I guess, going on in the net, but they don't get that same label. Why is that, bro? I've seen a couple of those portal videos he's talking about, man, but I got to try to find some more for you guys, bro. We got to deep, we're going to have to go deeper into that hole, bro. Figure out the truth, man. We seekers at the end of the day. This is Ames Monument, found in Buford, Wyoming. This structure is 60 feet tall, made out of pure granite. They say it was made as a monument to the Ames brothers, who were major financers of the Transcontinental Railroad. Said to be built in 1869 mm. with no power tools and no way to move these type of granite blocks. Cap. People in that area know that monument was there before 1869. And like the pyramids of Egypt and Central America, Ames Monument also contains passageways and hollow spaces. Just like the pyramids of Egypt and South America, this pyramid has passageways to enter. That further lets me know mm -hmm. someone stayed in this pyramid at one point of time. And the face on this monument, the granite does not match the original granite. That further lets me know that face was put on this structure. Let's keep going. It is hollow uh, to uh, save mm. labor and material. In October of 2010, under the direction of the state of Wyoming, skilled masons opened up one of the narrow passageways into the structure and allowed architects to map out its interior. It was just a real high point in my life, that moment of getting in there and standing up and looking around. To walk around in it, there's like a six-foot passage that goes around the interior of the pyramid around a central uh, mass. And the stones that are uh, in there uh, kind of hang out and jut out, and, and uh, they're very crude. And the, the, 
there's no uh, floor uh, to speak of. Uh, it goes up and down, and uh, at the corners of the interior are some columns that you can go through, and in one corner there is uh, carved out sort of a bigger uh, room-like, and uh, so there may have been mm -hmm. gatherings in there of, of the workers. <laughs> Gatherings of the workers inside of the pyramid, huh? Cap. Look at these stones on this pyramid. Mm. They didn't build it. We know the truth now. Well, I'm spitting so I got some kind of facts, bro. Like, why yeah, the workers build a room for them to hang out in? I'm not I'm not buying that, bro. It's like, what is up with these freaking pyramids having these like secret passages and stuff, man? Who's like coming in and out of them, bro? That's the real question we need to be asking ourselves. What do you guys think, Seekers? You know, with all this talk of tunnels and underground bunkers being built, and all the stuff going on with Taylor Swift and the Kansas City Chiefs, you know. I figured it was time I connect those two dots for you. For entertainment value, of course, because I know nothing, and I'm just making this stuff up. Mm -hmm. Alright, now how many people have seen a video like this on their FYP? Well, what if I told you that that tunnel system has everything to do with the Kansas City Chiefs, as well as a whole lot of other things? All right, well, this starts with this guy right here, Lamar Hunt, who used to be the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, and his family still owns them to this day. Oh, and fun fact, he's also the guy that came up with the term Super Bowl. Well, what most people don't know is Lamar Hunt also had another project, and that's known as Subtropolis. It's something out of a Jules Verne science fiction novel, a large working city operating deep underground as we go about our lives on the surface above. It's real, and it's right here in the United States. Harry Smith takes us to Subtropolis. Inside a hill in Kansas City is a place you kind of have to see to believe. It's called Subtropolis. Mm. Decades ago, limestone was mined here for concrete and asphalt. What's left is space. A lot of space. How many space is there? Okay, so what's down here right now, we have 6 million square feet of buildings leased to 55 companies. There's 1,700 employees that run around here and, and go to work every day. It's a massive industrial park, all underground. I mean, this is almost like a little bit like a science fiction-y sort of thing. Yeah. When you're down here, do you ever worry, like, the world could go come to an end upstairs, and you guys are just oh. going to be safe, toiling away, right? Now, Centropolis is home to some pretty big entities, like the National Archives, as well as the EPA. Oh. And it's also the storage facility for some of the biggest films in Hollywood. Let's start with the past. We control temperature and humidity. Thousands of film canisters holding some of the most beloved movies. They're here in the underground vaults and storage. It's hard to believe. It's, it's mind-blowing the scale that we have here. A short drive away and you'll find not one but two big businesses that save thousands of dollars on overhead because of the climate down. All right, Subtropolis is a rabbit hole all on its own that we can go down later if you want to. But what we're going to focus on right now is Lamar and his family history. Now, in his rise to wealth, Lamar was a partner in crime with his dad. Mm. This guy right here, Harrelson L. Hunt. All right, now, Harold was not only a one-time a plantation owner, but he got his wealth 
from the oil fields in Texas, which at one point made him the richest man in America. In Dallas, Texas, where millionaires are not at all unusual, this man carrying part of his lunch to work in a paper bag is something special. For among those who have amassed great wealth from petroleum, he has amassed by far the most. More than the Murchisons, more than the Collins, more than the Richardsons, even more than the Gettys. He has no chauffeur, he has no private airplanes, he takes no vacations on the Riviera, he makes no significant grants to charity. Hmm. But Haroldson Lafayette Hunt is the biggest of them all, the richest man in America, the richest and one of the most controversial. Well, Haroldson not only did oil, but he was a big player in politics. In fact, he helped McCarthy start his presidential campaign. Here's where it gets interesting. Not only did he fund the McCarthy campaign, but he also funded the Cuban Revolution Council, which worked with the Mafia and the CIA to take down Fidel Castro. Mm -hmm. And because of that connection right there is why a lot of people think he helped in the assassination of JFK. But of course, that whole situation worked itself out. And another motive that a lot of people don't know about for him being involved in JFK is because of his best friend, this guy right here, Edwin Walker. Hmm. Now, Walker was an open white supremacist, and he was also in charge of the Arkansas Military District during a horrible time in our history called the Little Rock Nine. That's when the desegregation of high schools was happening in Arkansas. So where nine students tried to attend school and were met with all this. And it got so bad that where Eisenhower made Walker send the National Guard there. Now Walker ended up being a commander in the infantry division in Germany. And when he was caught teaching his supremacy ways, JFK stripped him of his military status. Hmm. Hold over there. So not only was there all of that, but a whistleblower also came out and said that she was at a party where Haroldson Hunt and Richard Nixon were talking about what was going to happen to JFK the next day. So all the way from the Kansas City Chiefs to the underground bunkers to the desegregation of schools and JFK, sure is a lot of dots. Now stay safe. It said it was all made up. He doesn't have, I guess, have any actual facts, so you know it's not confirmed. But seekers, what do you guys think, man? Dropped a lot of information. This is the football. Bouncing around. It's still bouncing around. Now the officials will attempt to get. Raps did that on freaking purpose, bro. See, that's what people when people say like the NFL stuff is scripted, man. That's what people what they mean by that, man. You guys know yesterday, the freaking Chiefs freaking won against the Ravens, bro, and the freaking San Francisco won against the um, Lions, man. So, you know, a lot of people are not kind of happy about that, bro. Some people, that's why people be saying the NFL be scripted, man, because they, they said they want the Chiefs in there because they know Taylor Swift was with Travis Kelsey right now, so they want that media coverage, bro. And I don't know how much people how do you hear do this, but oh, they it, hear it will keep you awake at night. I mean, if you have children like I do. Coming in my mind and, right now is remote yeah. dealing. Yes. Is that involved in this? It's but in a very high tech way, technologically. This where when you start experimenting with and, and reverse engineering an extraterrestrial vehicle, their communication systems are not based on the speed of light like our cell phones, right? Or video. They're based on this understanding of the cosmos because they've lived for millennia mm. in that understanding. Technologies that interface with directed thought. I call it a technology assisted consciousness and consciousness that assists the technology so they can interface bioelectric field and thought and they navigate the space that the speed of thought versus mm -hmm. the speed of light.
But think about why that's so important. If you're from the Andromeda galaxy, which is two and a half million light years from here, at the speed of light, your cell phone, it would take two and a half million years for a signal to get there, and another two and a half million years for them to answer, and you hear it. It's five million years. There are certain technological thresholds you have to have crossed if you're an extraterrestrial interstellar civilization. And physicists have estimated that the volume of space in a coffee mug has enough potential energy to boil off all the oceans of the world. Tesla called it the infinite energy field, but it, as soon as you step into the reality, the three-dimensional reality of these uh, UAPs and UFOs, you immediately begin talking to people, and this is what happened to me in the early 90s, mm -hmm. to people who know the physics of the energy systems, because these things are not using oil, gas, coal, nuclear, what have you. They approached me, and this is um, the fall of 93, just before I briefed CIA director uh, Woolsey, and they said, look, you don't need to be talking. They knew all about this meeting that was going to happen. And I, you don't need to be talking to the president and, and the CIA director about this. They don't know anything, and they're not going to know anything. If you want to know, you talk to us. We're the WFO. We're the work for other contractors. We're the people who are working on these technologies and doing the technology transfer. And then they were trying to convince me to side with what they were doing. And I said, no. I said, this is a corrupt enterprise. And then he offered, that he says, you're a doctor, you can take out as many credit cards as you want. We'll zero them out each month because we run the supercomputers that back up the entire banking system. And we can get an infinite amount of money through certain techniques. For the man, I said, then you're going to own me, aren't you? Because he says, no, we're just trying to help. You see how these... This is an absolutely true story. You put me under sodium pentothal light detector. Now, it, if you look at uh, quantum entanglement and the concepts of the universe being a holographic mm. conscious entity, which it is, then you start talking about not just material, but you're also talking about uh, other dimensions that are at refined levels of frequencies and vibration. But it's not like it's in some distant place, it's folded with zoom in on it. The entire image would be in there and zoom in again. It'd be, it's holographic. The cosmos is this conscious quantum hologram. And so there are many, many, many dimensions. Mm. So I said they approached the man, they tried to get him to sign with the man, they offered him money. If in money man and he turned it down, not too many people would do that, bro. They would take the deal like that. And so they so, but I guess he's still strong, man. Hmm. Told you, bro, this level of technologies, man. I guess there's different levels, bro. It gets dangerous as you go up. Could this be a grand experiment? It's very possible as well. Hmm. Are you getting into we're living in a simulation? I believe that we're living in a simulation. I don't understand it. I don't understand when people yeah. say we're living in a simulation. I have yeah. no idea what they're talking about. So, if you understand that, we're still talking about a creation, right? So mm -hmm. we believe most people believe that, we believe that we're living in a created universe. I happen to believe so because when I look at the science, the quantum physics proves to me that someone or something created this. This isn't just pop up out of the blue and just hey, here we are. There's a universe with people in it. <clears throat> so. If you look at the quantum physics and what's been done recently in laboratories, hmm. scientists were able to do something incredible. They created a eighth dimensional quasi crystal. Something powerful. This eighth dimensional quasi crystal, it gave them a glimpse into understanding the third dimension. And this is how. When they position it in a particular angle, it created, <clears throat> excuse me, when they position, position it in a particular angle, it created something called a fourth dimensional quasi crystal mm -hmm. and when they position the fourth dimensional quasi crystal in a particular angle it casts a shadow of a sphere and the sphere is our universe so they discovered that we are living in the shadow of a higher dimension mm -hmm. in other words the angle of a higher multi-dimensional quasi crystal potentially could be what has created this gigantic sphere we call our universe and what's interesting about that is, this is 
a shadow, but not a shadow of darkness, it's a shadow of light. It's a light matrix. Ooh. We're talking about the tech, the spiritual technology utilized to create this entire realm. This entire realm is created with some type of spiritual technology, and this technology is so incredible, it's imbued with divine matter, divine wisdom, divine knowledge, mm. but it's also imbued with darkness. But what's interesting about the darkness in this yin and yang, it always seems to be a battle against each other, but in the end, for the most part, the light always seems to win. Even if it takes a long period of time, the cycle happens where the darkness leaves and the light comes in. We're sitting in a room right now that's pretty, pretty well lit, right? If I was to turn on something dark, I couldn't make the light dim any. In other words, if I, there's nothing I can, there's no darkness I can inject into this room with these physical lights that would make this room dark right now. Mm -hmm. But if I turn all these lights off and just do something as simple as turn on the light on my cell phone, the darkness will flee from that light instantaneously. So the smallest amount of light will make darkness flee. And so I, took, I take that to the universal scale because I believe it's all fractal. I believe that we're, it's all as above, so below. Mm -hmm. And it's all about how many conscious beings does it take before the darkness flees. There's a number that we have to hit. When we hit that specific percentage of number of awakened souls on this planet, that's what it will flee. There you go. What we're talking about is we're talking about obtaining Christ consciousness. I get a little emotional about this. Hmm. That's so powerful. <clears throat> Sorry. So we're talking about <clears throat> we're talking about this. See, Christ never said he was returning. Jesus never said he was coming back. He said that Christ will return. We're talking about this. When every single person gets this right, it's back. And we're back in the golden age. Divine. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You want to take a break? Yeah. If you had to take a break, I guess it was very powerful for him, bro. Spreading that information. About the shadow universe, man. He kind of is right there with but like, because if I guess if you're in a dark room and you light, you turn on the light, but like, yeah, it is instantly flee, man, because the light is it's the brightest, bro. saying some I guess some information bro it's up to you guys like I said whether um to look into this man like I said this video is their view together don't believe what I say don't believe what the video say always do your own research it's up to you guys seekers thank you guys and stay with me to the end of the videos you're a real seeker man seeking out the truth man so always freaking keep that in mind bro like I said subscribe to the channel also hit that post notification bell so you never miss when I drop guys you guys can catch it in the next video I will Peace seekers.